Okay, I guess we can start. So welcome everyone to this Debian Mobile Buff. Uh, initially I had not planned to do it because mm, not much had changed since last year, but because we are several people that were discussing these topics and yeah, we, have, we had s still some changes since last year, so it was just a good idea to refresh. Um, there is a Gobi document, mostly prepared by my peer um, attendees in Debian Mobile, and I wish this could, can be a buff. So if you have something to say, just raise a hand, we give you the microphone, and the goal is I'm not here to present things. I'm here to, if we can somehow create a motivation for work to be done and instead of good discourses. So the agenda is um, to have an overview on where we are um, so that we are here to keep Debian relevant for mobiles. Um, I think if you are here it's because you are somehow convinced that it's a topic that is very interesting for Debian and uh, that is currently not well served by free software. Uh, we, the intention is then to review the change in changes since last year and what we should do now. So, um, inside Debian, you want to pre pre present or I just read through? Okay. So, the EFL stack, uh, Enlightenment stack, was mostly updated to the recent versions. The FSO, which is the networking stack that was into OpenMoco, um, upstream worked with us to get their recent release into Debian, so we have also had an update um, into Debian. There are various people involved in Debian Mobile uh, that bought some various devices in the hope they could run Debian on it. It hasn't been successful as far as I know. <laughs> um, um, another achievement was the Debian Mobile e email list. We had several discussions on Debian Devil and then on Debian Project and whatever to have this list created, which is debian-mobile at list.debian.org. Um, the discussion was also around uh, what this list should do because we already have lists for kernel discussions, we are also have different lists for everything that is in between and the, the focus of this list is mostly everything that is presented to the user uh, in terms of user interfaces and stuff but is not supposed to, to concern how do I l build a Linux kernel for this or this device. Uh, so the list was created, I think, since last year. Since the moment it was created, it has seen something like 25 to 30 mails, so it's not a huge success. Not many discussions have happened there, and some of the mails were just not at the right place, at least, at least not in, a, in the place as how we saw it. Um, RC also opened, which is uh, Debian Mob Mobile on OFTC. Um, we have mostly Paul uh, doing the Twitter robot for us and pasting comments or, or URLs with relevant information from time to time. Anything to, anyone wants to comment? Other thing? I didn't want to speak, but I'm still speaking. Anyway. Um, <laughs> outside Debian, um, the GPU driver reverse engineering project for our Mali, Qualcomm and Reno, PowerVR, FIMJ, 3DSE. Uh, so various projects are also beginning to get some, some power. Uh, the Android, Android Linux kernel stuff is slowly merging into mainline. As far as I know, it's far from complete, but there is a work in progress. Um, the KDE community released Plasma Active, which is a variation on the Plasma desktop that is installed by default on Debian KDE, um, which is aimed at uh, finger interfaces and tablet style interaction with Debian. As far as I know, Plasma Active is packaged in Debian, is somehow working, um, but not all parts of it probably. And the KDE community has been working on the Vivaldi tablet. Maybe you have probably heard of it. It's a supposedly completely free tablet uh, that was released uh, and that is to sell with a completely free open source stack up to Plasma. Um, the underlying uh, stack is mostly MER based, which is the rebirth of MIGO, whatever thing, RPM based. 
it's a tablet that supposedly runs free software. As far as I know, there are still some proprietary blobs, but okay. Um, Open Moco Replicant, FSO, SHRS, and Edge is an expansion of hardware support. So replicants, as far as I know, can you, can you explain just a word? So Replicant is a fork of Android to replace all the non-free blobs. Mostly, most of that stuff is hardware enablement, and they're doing a lot of reverse engineering work to help port um, port Android to devices, so that um, you don't have to run any blobs when you're running Android. That part of that work is also writing libraries so that other platforms can use those libraries to support the hardware as well, and that includes uh, freesmartphone.org and SHR and Debian or whatever. Cool, thanks. Um, we have also seen the rebirth of the um, OpenMoco through the GTA 04 platform that is becoming available. As far as, far as I know, it's a PCB that you have to put into an existing OpenMoco. Um, so that is supposed to fix the bugs that were in the GTA 2 and 3. From OpenMoco, there is also Kanaima, which is a Debian derivative working with hardware vendors to produce Kanaima Mobile. I, I don't know much, but if someone can tell a word about it. Kanaima is a sponsored distribution by Venezuelan government, and they want to build a Debian phone with uh, based on Canaima, Venezuelan, and uh, well, they are working on it. I'm not sure if okay. what else to say about it. Then we have also seen Mozilla starting Boots to Jekko, Firefox OS, whatever things that boots, um, Navigator, and the Migo community that, that was born after um, virus merges was closed, Memo is being defunded, and various projects split out of from Memo and Mo Migo as a result. And so Jola, uh, like last week, something like that, created a Twitter website to announce some work. We have seen Mer, Nemo, Cordia Tab, etc. So the whole deb-based Migo dream just evaded in smoke. Uh, they also re released Tizen which was made by mostly the same people that were doing Migo, but with a complete restart from scratch, involving Samsung Intel, um, which is supposed to work with EFL, so Enlightenment, and the Git repositories indicate that it's a Debian Ubuntu heritage, but they have mostly been just putting every package into a Git repository with initial commit, and it's not, yeah. And WebOS has been freed. Okay, open discussion. What should we do now? What should, can we put in Debian? What should we put in Debian? Should we just, just give up now? Um, yeah, up to you. <laughs> now I sit down. <laughs> Who wants to start? Well, I think it's very important for Debian to, to keep relevant in the following years because we desktop is really losing traction and uh, mobile devices are more and more uh, um, in, uh, in the hands of people. And uh, we have the, the problem of the base drivers and kernel support and binary blocks for 3D acceleration and all these kind of problems, which is particular to each specific device. So that's probably have to be, uh, not sure if some, place like Linaro or some other uh, foundations or institutions can, can deal to solve that problem. And I think uh, Debian should maybe provide a way to integrate those pieces easily, but not provide them because it's not, it's not uh, compliant to the Debian software license. And, um, and also then we, the main problem with the open moco has been the ui so i think it, w it would be nice to pick up some project a stream and bring the ui bits so we can use on uh, on mobiles
strikes me that one of the major problems with putting Debian on any, any mobile device is the howler. Um, we just um, don't understand how to interact with the hardware. Um, a lot of devices come with Android. Can we regard Android as actually a shim layer under which, um, within which uh, Debian services can run? If you imagine the Freedom Box, that has no obvious UI, but you can run that in maybe an, an, an LXC container alongside Android. All you need to do is to take your Android phone, root it, and then you can install, uh, <coughs> for example, BusyBox-based systems at the moment. It's been fairly well tested. And it means you can use uh, a version of an installer to install, uh, to can install uh, at least parts of, of, of Debian. As far as I know, there are applications on the Android market that just install a Debian root in which yeah, then you can install Debian packages on that run on Android, but it's the kernel is not free. I thought about a slightly different approach, which again doesn't get you to a free kernel, but it gets you to a lot of hardware enablement quickly, and that is to just go take the cyanogen mod build tree, which has kernel and binary hardware device driver and so forth support now for dozens of different commercially available Android devices, including current technology like you know Samsung Galaxy S2 devices and things like that, like the one in my pocket. Um, and what if we were just to, you know, my original thoughts were, gee, wouldn't it be cool to take a WebOS build tree and the CyanogenMod build tree, slam them together, and immediately have WebOS builds for everything that CyanogenMod had hardware support for? Wouldn't be 100% free because you'd still have binary blobs and the kernel and all of that, but it would get an interesting user space up and running on a lot of different, you know, available pieces of hardware. The exact same approach could, of course, be used to drop you know, some sort of a Debian packaging, you know, uh, system on top of, you know, these kernels and bootloaders and, and hardware support pieces that are out there. Um, I, I, think, I think that this is one of those places where, because of the nature of the devices that are being created, if we want to focus on building upper levels, you know, relevant user interfaces and things like that, not sweating in the short term that the hardware we can get is not possible to do great, um, free, you know, completely freedom-loving uh, kernel and device driver support for, and just co-opting the work that others have done to do community builds of Android for a lot of these devices to get the hardware-enabling kernel pieces, and then layer everything else we want on top of that might be a way to get to a point where we can build a critical mass of users for some stack which then one or more vendors might be motivated to do purpose-built hardware for that you know, actually would, would have the characteristics we want all the way down to the hardware. Which would mean some sort, some sort of Debian on Android or? It's not on Android. Yeah. So to be very clear, this is, to, to me, you know, Android implies that you've got the Dalvik, um, you know, uh, virtual machine stuff and all of the you know, Android-related content above that. To me, what I'm talking about is taking the build trees and use, because they all use a Linux kernel, and Linux kernel device drivers, many of which are in binary blob form. But what if you just, you know, use the portion of that build system that got you a working kernel and hardware support and built the rest of the stack on top of it? I don't care if, you know, anything Android is in that stack or not. Um, I happen to think Android devices are just fine in terms of utility, but they certainly are not just fine in terms of the number of sort of cloud dependencies they seem to sort of lead you to, to build out of the box and the way lots of other things in the stack work. So if we could build a completely free Debian style stack above the kernel, you know, imagine just using the kernel and hardware enablement support that all these folks working on you know, Android community builds like CyanogenMod have done, and then layer on top of that the rest of the stack that we would like to have on our devices, then maybe eventually get somebody to build a device that doesn't require non-free bits between our stack and the hardware. So that's a good idea, but I think it won't actually just work, or at least it would work, but you wouldn't get any power management, which is a big deal on all these mobile phones, because that's the bit that's completely different between Android kernels and real kernels. So whilst it will probably work, I think we'll find there's some ifs and buts. But uh, it's worth a try because it is an interesting idea. Uh, I'm just not sure it'll actually just work like <laughs> that. It's not quite that easy. Uh, 
uh, I represent a commercial company who um, um, is using M M Debian to produce devices for the disabled people that can't speak. And it's, a, a, it's, it's wonderful. We've got something which will not change every one and a half contexts. Uh, we supply to the national health system um, in the UK, and they require that we support devices for seven years after the final product is sold. If we use uh, Android as a target delivery platform um, and, and have Debian running alongside it, it means that we can have our long-term support in Debian, and we can and we can tr uh, track the shifting sands of new hardware as it comes out every year and a half. And, and Debian for is never going to be able to track that. Um, but there we have, you know, uh, commodity uh, devices which can be then uh, targeted by Debian, um, and we can use it immediately. You know, uh, assuming that there's a port to a particular version of Android, it's a way of keeping De Debian relevant because otherwise we're just going to be behind the curve continuously. Maybe. I just comment who will do work. <laughs> Maybe a comment on the Migo idea last year. I tried to package it, uh, most of the stack, and I mean, based on, it, it was based on Qt, so most of the Qt was in Debian, and it was rather easy to start from that. The problem was project management insanity mostly because the interfaces, both binary and code the interfaces were changing el every two days and they had non, no idea of tagging of whatever and the complete stack was moving all the time and it was completely unreasonable to, to, to package this res reasonably in Debian or we should just have frozen a specific date and hope everything works. But um, I was mostly alone doing it so it's also quite a huge pile of work because you have like tens and tens of packages of various things that do various things that is, are not testable on our devices because it was mostly dev developed for their in-house products that were not, not yet out. So it was not actually released in the end, yeah. So, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, I mean, so MIMO is now turned into Tizen, which is similar but different again. Uh, <laughs> HTML5 instead of Qt, instead of DTK2, whatever the front end is. Mm, and I guess we don't really care about that so long as we can package the parts that actually make it a useful UI. So I don't know if anybody's looked at the Tizen stuff yet. I've been to a couple of talks showing me what shiny things you can do in HTML5, but I haven't really understood the structure yet. And kind of the same question for WebOS. Does it come in sensible size parts that are amenable to packaging, or is it some crazy pile of poo um, that <laughs> uh, is going to be really hard to actually use? And I, I mean, I've seen a lot of people at Arm have been buying WebOS phones and going, hey, these are really cool, and they're actually reasonably free, and it's not Android, and it's good. Um, and the, again, the design seems sensible. So I'm actually quite interested in having a look at that, but I haven't yet. Does anyone here actually know what we get and what we don't get? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have we have no clue. It turns out <laughs> maybe we should look. Yeah, mm, uh, one of the questions I also had in that domain is what do we miss in Debian for something boots to get Jekyll or something like that? I mean, we have almost all tools to boot to navigator full screen standard one user. But what what does it mean to have an actual web OS thing that does things in the navigator that we don't have yet? Uh, one of the things of coming out of the box is trying to have people testing all these technologies and have a play with Tyson or or uh, web OS and see how how difficult can be package it, uh, to package it or all these kind of questions and. Uh, maybe write a report and send it to the mailing list so the rest of the community uh, can uh, can discuss about it. So that would be helpful, a helpful to start. Sorry, so I have lots of interest, but I haven't done any work for ages, so I have lots of questions and no actual answers. Um, 
So you know, I had an open Mocco and it kind of worked. Uh, it didn't work very well with Debian because the UI was wrong and you couldn't use your fingers and it was all tiny and crap. Um, and the battery went flat immediately. Um, uh, so I put SHR on it and that actually worked quite well. And that was the phone Ophonos UI. So that's right. No, Ophone something. Free FSO, yes, that's it. So that seems to work. Um, quite a lot that's been packaged for Debian. So is there, in fact, any reason why that isn't adequate as a UI? Do we need to look at other ones? Is it kind of just old and crap, or? FSO, I mean, does that, in fact, do the job to an adequate level for people's uses or not? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Paul told me <laughs> that uh, FSO was a free stack and it was more aligned with the Debian philosophy of doing things. While the others, all, all of them have like some binary hidden thing. And so FSO was nice, but it's not, it's not like the latest thing or as fancy or having HTML5 or it doesn't go with newer technologies or at least that's wha what I understood. I may be wrong in talking crap because I haven't haven't seen it really. But. Um, as the main, as the developer who ha was responsible for taking out the OpenSync uh, framework, which was another kind of thing in this area and as I'm really quite worried about FSO as well. The thing, the, the problem that comes up is um, doing a release freeze. Packages and frameworks like Debian Mobile wants to use, they seem to become abandoned. They seem to become just um, bit rot in the archive. And they, are, they f frequently attract failed build from source. They f frequently find that the maintainer is not responsive. And therefore, during this release process, they frequently get removed. What are we going to do about that? How can we keep these frameworks alive so they survive into stable? Because that's where users want them to be. So I'm following the FSO IRC channels, the OpenMoco community channel. Um, and FSO itself is being continually, continually developed and they're adding new hardware support and stuff like that. Um, in fact, for the Wheezy release, they worked with Debian to get the latest FSO release into Debian. So for me, um, community-based projects like FSO are important because we can get involved and contribute to those projects more easily than something like Android, which is completely controlled by Google, and um, they just do code dumps. So yeah, that's another aspect to think about. Paul, sometimes it's not just the actual framework itself, but uh, does FSO still depend on uh, E17? Because that, that that was one that had to be removed because of a series of um, um, issues that it, it just wasn't being maintained effectively. So um, FSO is the middleware, so it's it's like a DBus API that controls the hardware. It um, doesn't have anything to do with the E17 or EFL or anything like that, but there are things that use it that also use EFL and E17. Um, yeah, so E17 would be the UI layer, yeah. and there are some things in that layer that interface with FSO to, say, turn on the wireless or whatever. Yeah, it, it's that fragility that worries me. So E17 is also really busy upstream and is an important part of the Tizen stuff, as I understand it. So it's not like these projects are dead. I mean, they may not be well maintained or packaged in Debian, but that's not because nobody's using them or nobody cares. So uh, I, that's fixable, basically. We can make this stuff work if anybody cares to make this stuff work, seems to me to be the state. And you know, if people aren't fixing bugs, well, that's just the usual thing. And release managers have to make decisions based on that. But I don't think. And yes, there's always a risk that upstream projects will die and disappear. Meh. Um, either we pick something um, and use it ourselves enough that it doesn't die, or get other people to use it 
or, or we, we have to change our minds and, and change. Uh, that, uh, there's nothing you can do about that fundamentally except try and make good choices. So we sit here and try and make good choices and we see what happens. One of the questions I... One of the questions I was also asking myself is um, probably to have something mobile-ish in Debian, what we probably need is some sort of corporation that does the work in Debian first, or at least bases its work in Deb uh, on Debian. That's what Migo did. It's just died in smoke, but... Um, um? Uh, well, yeah, my, my question is more um, what do we miss in Debian for track for yeah to make Debian an interesting platform for Debian mobile I mean we are probably convinced that it's a good platform for it but are we convincing people with money to pay developers to do that and I don't know what's lacking open question so the biggest problem I've had trying to do stuff is our fairly strict adherence to only supporting upstream kernels and the time it takes for uh, Linaro or somebody Samsung to make stuff work and then get their version working and then get it upstream to the kernel devs which takes months uh, especially if you're going through a massive reorganization of the whole arm stack so nobody can do anything for like a year and a half and for that to come back down to Debian you know that's two years later so we as a random Debian dev going I want Debian installer to work on this device have to wait two years uh, by which time you can't get that hardware anymore so that kernel support cycle is a real impediment to doing anything in Debian. You, know, you've, you can use our infrastructure, but you've got to get your kernels from somewhere else. And that's fine, so long as the support for that in DI is easy to use and we tell people how to do it. Um, but the problem is, as soon as that works, then you stop sending patches upstream for that because it's not your problem anymore and you don't care. You, now you've got it booting, so things take a long time. And that's, you know, everybody has this problem in different ways, depending on exactly where they sit in the ecology of uh, providers of hardware and providers of socks and kernel devs and distro people and it's a right pain in the ass but that is you know a real practical impediment to getting work done you know just what's the freedom box people they've had exactly that problem as well I don't know what the answers are Linaro is trying to make that less broken um, but the problem is that it only really works for the devices that um, Linaro members care about which isn't necessarily the devices you can actually buy that we want to use because they're cheap. Uh. But does the um, is the packaging paradigm paradigm still sane in a mobile world? I mean, if you base your work on Debian but just change the kernel to and take still keep the, all the rest, is the the fact that we have packages that update or that we can update partly so is still a good paradigm for mobile? So yeah, packages are great for all the reasons that packages are great. Uh, and uh, that hasn't changed. You can add software, you can take software away, you don't end up with random crap on your device that you can't get rid of, that accidentally overwrites things. That's all marvelous. Um, it's, it's the process of upstreaming stuff. Uh, so the, the distro part of this is actually the problem, not packaging per se. So you know, I still think you want to use package kernels via flash kernel. You don't want to put random files on the device. I mean, maybe for dev purposes. But you know, if you're giving it to anybody else, uh, it should come as a package installed with Flash Kernel, which means you need Flash Kernel support, and Flash Kernel needs to be less shit, um, and uh, which is all work underway, but uh, you know, slowly, um, usual sorts of problems. So yeah, so again, we know what problems are. It requires quite a lot of work to fix, and some of the stuff we can't do in the distro, I think, just because it, it is too slow. Whatever happens. So we will have to be providing extra packages outside of, of Debian itself for some time. Well, unless we have a policy change within the project that uh, we don't, we can package stuff that isn't upstream yet. For so the kernel. Yeah. So the kernel people have been highly resistant to that for good reasons. It's a massive pain in the ass carrying massive, huge patch trees. They don't want to get into that game and watching it in, you know, in Linaro with the Samsung landing team and the TI landing team and the people who are trying to coordinate Ubuntu distros and releases. You know, it's really complicated and, and lots of people <laughs> who are very clever are spending a lot of time wrestling with this problem. Uh, we as Debian, whoever it is that runs the kernel packages, probably doesn't want to spend any more time than they already do on that. 
So they're sim that, you know, without lots more manpower, they're just saying, we're not having anything. It doesn't come from upstream because we can't cope. And I think they're probably right. But nothing stops us making extra kernel packages from other people's trees that work um, that people can install. So I think we can cope with that if people care enough. But the problem is that as soon as you start doing that for 10 different devices, it starts to get to be a really big deal. Mm. Well, actually, the, nothing in the policy prevents someone else to just package a new Linux kernel. Yeah. But it's just a huge amount of work. So some perspective on that from the OpenMoCo devices. Um, even the GTA 02 still doesn't have a full upstream kernel support for the whole of the device. Um, the way that uh, the Debian folks who are working on that have dealt with that is a repository on Alioth with the kernels and all that sort of stuff. The problem is that you end up running really old kernels that UDEV doesn't support um, and so there have had to, been to be um, extra patches to allow that to work. Um, and then there are new new bugs introduced like um, I think 2.6 is it 2.6.29 is the most stable um, and then 2.6.34 and 37 are the other two um, but they introduce issues with the micro SD card sometimes you can't boot sometimes you can um, so it's really horrible to be using old kernels and not having hardware support upstream so just try and push upstream is absolutely the best thing to do. At you just can't do anything else, really. Um, in parallel, provide older kernels if possible, but, yeah. Other questions, ideas? Everybody's hungry. <laughs> We still have 15 minutes, so if you want to diverge to other parts of the mobile ecosystem, then feel free. Well, um, I don't know if you know, but <laughs> I will tell you. Um, there's an interesting movement, movement in Venezuela towards uh, mobile, mobile devices. Uh, Venezuelan government might uh, invest some c uh, quantity of uh, money to develop some some of the missing stuff uh, to be a, a mobile, a Debian based mobile operating system. Um, we're trying to make a Canaima version uh, in that is installable on mobile devices. There's an interesting uh, partnership between Venezuelan government and China government that includes uh, some, um, I don't know, uh, it, is, it, it, is, it is easy for us to get hardware from manufacturers like CTE and uh, Huawei uh, um, and that's only a comment so that you take in account. Um, yeah. Would it be possible to for the Kanaima people to interact more on the Debian mobile <laughs> list? Yeah. The, that would be because we, we now have the derivatives ecosystem that we know that but the Kanaima is just one of the hundreds that we have. So, but acting di directly on the Debian mobile mailing list just to say this or this happened and opinions or just, it's just good to have more information. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's clearly a, I guess the Venezuelan and Chinese governments have some of the same concerns we do in that we'd, they'd prefer Google not to be in charge of everything they do <laughs> as well. So, you know, there's a, there's a useful alignment. Are you targeting particular hardware? Uh, have you already chosen? a UI and a middleware, you know, a particular software stack? Do you already have a plan there? And if so, which one? Well, 
not not actually. We're on the early stages. Um, actually, I'm here because <laughs> I'm the same as you. Uh, but we we don't want to. It's not that we don't want to. We prefer uh, not shipping Android on the mobile devices. There's uh, two um, major manufacturers in Venezuela. It's called Vetelka and Orinokia. Then they have partnerships with these Chinese uh, manufacturers, I told you. Uh, but we're trying to do something that's Debian compatible, something that we just have to reuse reuse our platform for for Kanaima, and uh, of course is is the easiest way because our developers are not trained in Android uh, development, so uh, that's the main reason why why we would choose something Debian based. You ask about sorry. <laughs> you just you asked uh, something about devices. Yeah, we have some pro prototypes. Uh, actually, oh, I left my bag <laughs> in the hack lab. Well, I can show you that later. I, I brought some prototypes. Uh, the actually I wasn't was not the peop the the person that was going to be here, but anyway. Uh, I can show you the prototypes later, uh, and we're experimenting on that, but only Android stuff, not nothing Debian based. And do you actually have people lined up to do work yet, or is this just a kind of specking out thing? Uh, yeah, I think you know you could get something going here. Um, done right, which will be quite exciting. It would give a direction to this, so what should we do, you know? If you lot decide to do something, well, that's probably a choice made, and we'll all go, yeah, all right, that'll do. Uh, <laughs> anything that works, because obviously if you could focus on two or three of these rather than everybody trying 15 different things and none of them getting anywhere. So it's, it's the usual question of people actually prepared to spend serious time, and obviously a company that cares helps a lot just to people who are sat there all day working on things. I spent a few few time yesterday with them talking about this, and and they he also did a presentation on Kanaima, the derived distribution, and they well they have like a, a community of developers, there are more than fifty, and they are doing like parties and they are, it's growing and growing in in Venezuela. And uh, replying for the the question you were asking before, they were like highly interested on HTML5 technologies and JavaScript uh, UI-based systems for the stack, which then uh, WebOS or Tyson might be aligned to, the, to this purpose. And uh, I think they are more interested also to, to learn about these technologies so they can spread the knowledge around the country and have more and more people contribute and Maybe an interesting thing that Kanaima could do in collaboration with Debian or Debian Mobile for what it's worth is if we can concentrate on one or, or two devices that would be a, that would that yeah devices that could be shipped around the world to various people that could also help get gaining traction on this and as you said instead of just going if with every Chinese tablet and hope it does something that in the end does not work. We are we were discussing about that, but we didn't want to like make it official until we have like a, an approval. And but this is something going on about that, mm. and then some hardware might be available for developers. But uh, it's still work in progress. Yeah, my my only point is that uh, it might be interesting for them to get in contact with various people, not only in Venezuela, to gain traction around this and. I mean, it's n j not only a matter of sending free devices to anyone. This, yeah. Yeah, I guess another aspect, one of the problems with this is that the UI is quite closely tied to the hardware. You know, how big is the TV? How many lights has it got on it? Where are the buttons? All that stuff needs to work nicely. And 
which makes it difficult to work on the software independently of the hardware, which of course is exactly what Debian wants to do and make things terribly general, which is a bit like things that don't work very well. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, insofar as we can pick a couple of devices and, and stick to them, you know, Freedom Box people, you have to pick something to get anywhere. Um, but we have the additional problem that we're also trying to generalize everything. Um, and, you know, and the other, which doesn't sit well with the new hardware every six months cycle of the crazy mobile phone people. Um, meh. Okay, we have five remaining minutes. Thank you very much from the Kanaima people for some more light. It's very interesting. Anyone wants to add something else to the, mm, the Gobi? I think we'll probably send the minutes to the Debian Mobile or formatted things to the Debian, Debian Mobile mailing list. But yeah, I suppose I should say that if people need anything from Linaro, come and hassle me about it. Um, we won't probably give you what you want. But uh, in principle, we exist to make stuff easier to do on ARM where stuff covers everything. You know, especially that problem of the kernel enablement across lots of different hardware. There is a lot of work going on so that, you know, it gets more like x86 world where you can have a kernel that works on quite a lot of devices. And that will make our lives a lot easier when we finally get to that point. And standardized boot stuff. So we can expect life to improve in this area. Um, and, you know, I guess I'm the... Me and Steve McIntyre are the people in Debian to pester about stuff, and we'll see what we can do. Thank you. If we don't have any other questions, I just propose to close the session. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and let's hope next year's buff will have a little more what we have done in Debian, <laughs> more shiny. Yeah. Thank you very much.